So Apple just launched their brand new MacBook Pro 14 inch M4 Pro, but this might be completely the wrong laptop for you. Although it's showing some of the best performance and efficiency of any laptop ever created, I mean, quite literally, it's trumping every laptop ever created. It may be the wrong pick. When Apple launched their M4 lineup, they removed the eight gig option, which has thrown things off a bit. And so later in this video, after you look at the performance, the thermals, and some of the basic features of the MacBook Pro, I'm gonna give you a full buyer's guide and make my recommendation on which laptop you should be buying for video editing, graphic design, photography, digital art. And ultimately, I hope to help you make the right buying decision. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. Now what we have before us is the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Same design they've had since the M2 model. We have really nice upward facing speakers. Here's a quick audio sample for you. A fantastic 1080p webcam. This is the webcam on the MacBook Pro 14 inch model and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And their refined haptic trackpad and magic keyboard, which isn't as quiet as I would hope for, but it is a really solid keyboard that has great responsiveness, snapback, and really nice dished keys, which are super comfortable and easy to use. Here's an audio sample for yourself so you can hear everything in use. Now the display on the device is really, really good. However, it always catches me off guard that they don't have 100% Adobe RGB on these screens. It has a 4K display with a resolution of 3024 by 1964, super weird numbers, at 120 hertz. And they say it can get around 1000 to 1600 nits of screen brightness. To be totally honest, I usually use mine at around 350 of screen brightness, which is plenty for great battery life results. We have 100% sRGB, 85% Adobe RGB, and 96% DCI-P3 at a Dell TE of 1.21. They are supposed to be like the creator laptop or they're marketing themselves for creators and they don't even give us 100% Adobe RGB. Pretty annoying. And to top all of that, they have some weird settings in their display profiles. You can go ahead and change the preset from Adobe Display P3 600 nits. You can change it to digital cinema, design and print, photography, internet and web. So there's different settings in order to get the preferred color on your display. Now keep in mind, each of these adjusts the color tone on the display. And so that can be a little bit problematic in finding the right color tone when you're doing color grading or digital art. And so I would look into preferences. If you want DCI P3, that would be really good for video. If you want to do photography, I would definitely photography or design, I would definitely choose one of the P3s between D50 or D65. Now, if you're doing web, the sRGB would definitely be the right pick. But I'm just pointing this out to make sure you use the right profile while doing the work that you are doing. Otherwise, you think you have a super color accurate screen, but you're just using the wrong color profiles and then it has the wrong hues and tints and it can get really messy really fast. So just be aware of those settings. Now, that was a bit of a long explanation. So let's jump into the battery life and its effects on the device. Now, like I said, I usually use my laptop around 350 nits of screen brightness, which is about half to 75% on like a normal brightness level. Now, what I find is I can get 19 hours and 27 minutes on productivity, 20 hours and 11 minutes just streaming video playback while using Photoshop pretty intensely. I'm running the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. It got nine hours and 12 minutes of battery life. So really great battery life. These, like I said, are extremely performance savvy and efficient devices, these new M4 Pro chipsets. I saw seven hours and 54 minutes of Premiere Pro playback on a 4K project. I basically clicked play on a 4K project timeline in Premiere Pro and allowed it to loop and it took seven hours and 54 minutes for the battery to go dead. Now I also did live editing and playback loop and export combination. So I edited some, I allowed it to play back for a while and I exported a full project and that took me about seven hours and five minutes of battery life. So being a little bit more involved in the project and adding an export definitely ran the battery down a little bit quicker. It's a little more intense on the chipset. Now, taking a look at the ports, it has basically everything you need. Three USB Type-C's, an SD card reader, HDMI, 
headphone jack, and a dedicated power adapter. This is great because it doesn't use up one of your USB-Cs to charge the laptop, a big issue and frustration for a lot of people in older models of the different devices they had. Now, one thing that does grind my gears a little bit is no USB type A. I know we're gonna basically get out of USB type A at some point in the future, but for the moment, there's still a lot of USB type A devices and it just makes it kind of annoying because then you would have to bring a dongle along. So what I do instead of bringing a dongle because I basically have everything I need without a dongle is just a simple converter from USB type C to USB type A. This allows me to not carry around a big dongle and just use this little converter if I need to bring in any sort of USB type A's into the device. So that's a little hack that I have. Now taking a look at the device's form factor, it's built so well. It's it's firm, it's solid, it's rigid. It's a little heavier than some of the other devices in its category, like now the new G14. It's a gaming laptop, but they've made it so much like a MacBook Pro that it's basically a Windows clone with a weird slash on top. Anyway, this is a little bit heavier than that device, but I do like that because it has more rigidity, it's more firm, it feels more durable. Not a lot of press on the top cover. You can still see how thin it is, but it's a little bit heavier than something like the G14. This video is brought to you by the ASUS ProArt PX13, a two-in-one laptop built from the ground up for artists, designers, photographers, and videographers. This laptop provides a two-in-one pen-compatible 3K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs three pounds and is just over a half an inch thick. It has all-day battery life for productivity tasks, a durable aluminum chassis that exceeds stringent testing, and let's not forget about the ASUS dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM standard on every model, and an RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070, this device provides the necessary performance for even architecture and 3D modeling work. Check out my full review content of the ASUS ProArt PX13 within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or the description below. Now looking at the bottom cover, I love the engraved MacBook Pro on the bottom. Looks awesome. Also the embedded feet, there's actually a little bit of aluminum that pops up around to embed the foot, so it's very secure. Remember those old feet on the MacBook Pro? They popped off so easily. These are much more secure to the chassis. You can see some ventilation on the side, which, spoiler alert, Actually, no spoiler alert. I'll talk about that in a second. Ventilation on the side, really nice. I'll talk about when that actually is used and when it isn't. And then as you see, there are screws. So you can pull off the bottom cover. However, when you pull off the bottom cover, just a bunch of black squares and fan. So there's no upgrade path. In regards to this vent, let's talk about the thermals. As promised in the intro of the video, the thermals on this device are absolutely insane in the membrane. When you're editing 4K footage and then you go to export, I have a nine minute clip in Premiere Pro, I exported out at full quality 4K settings. I had zero decibels of fan noise. I had only 57 to 63 degrees Celsius on the chipset. So this laptop is very efficient, quiet, and it thermal manages very well. Now, if I were to go ahead and export 6K footage, which I did, I put in a 6K B-RAW clip into Premiere Pro, nine minutes long, exported out at full quality settings. I matched the source and exported 44 decibels of fan noise. So the fans kicked on, they utilized the ventilation here, and it saw 92 to 101 degrees Celsius on the chipset. So if you have higher resolution footage and you're really pushing the laptop hard, you will get some fan noise. But I don't know many people that are editing 6K footage. Most people are using 4K or 1080p. I use 6K cameras, and so that's the footage I am editing. So I did have some fan noise. All right, right now we're gonna talk about the performance of the device. Then we're gonna get into the buyer's guide and then I wanna talk about some memory and SSD issues and how to resolve those. So first and foremost, the performance. And this laptop crushes anything I've seen on my channel, like ever. Looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, better performance than anything I've ever seen. Looking at Cinebench 2024 single core and multi-core, this thing beats out one of the most powerful laptops year over year, the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i with an i9-14900HX and an RTX 4080. It beats it out in their simulated benchmarks. But life is not made of simulated benchmarks. And if you've watched my channel long, you know that just because things perform well for chipset benchmarks, doesn't mean they're gonna perform well with graphics intensive benchmarks. That's where things like 3D modeling, 6K and 8K video editing on Premiere Pro, not in Final Cut, all my Final Cut bros, not in Final Cut, but in Premiere Pro, something like the Legion Pro 7i will ultimately perform better than this MacBook Pro. But 
I wanna really wrap in a bow that this laptop is all about efficiency and performance, not just raw performance, which is why it makes for a great on-the-go creator laptop. Okay, moving on from the simulated benchmarks, let's check out Photoshop. Photoshop had the best score I have ever seen for a device. We scored an 11,873. The 24 gigs of RAM and the new M Core Pro with 24 core CPU, 20 core GPU and 16 core neural engine is a beast in Photoshop and you're gonna have no issues there. Now, moving down the line to the 4K export time. This is where I had some disappointment to be totally honest. Four minutes and 49 seconds for a 4K export is pretty much an average export for a thin and light laptop without a dedicated GPU. Some end up around the six to seven minute mark, but for the most part, most thin and light, non-dedicated GPU equipped laptops can get around a four to five minute export, some even less. So for me, I wanted to think holistically about this. I can edit whether I'm on battery power or plugged into the charger. Not all Windows laptops can do that and give you a great export time. If you unplug from the charger, the export time goes up to 10 or 12 minutes. So the MacBook Pro still gets a gold star for that. You can unplug from the charger and still get great performance. However, plugged into the charger, the performance doesn't improve. A little bit of a ding to the gold star. Maybe it's more like a corroded gold star, I don't know. Moving on to 6K video editing, however, it drastically improved and I was very surprised. It ended up with a 15 minute and 33 second export time. On average, if a gaming laptop is under 15 minutes, I'm very impressed with that laptop. Um, the best export time I've seen for the 6K B-RAW export to 6K full quality settings is 11 minutes and 38 seconds out of the Legion Pro 7i. And again, as an i9-14900HX and an RTX 4080. Did it reach that potential? It did not, but it is quite close. And for something that gets upwards of 20 hours of battery life for productivity and eight hours of battery life for video editing, seven for video editing with the export time, the Legion Pro will get like two hours for video editing. Uh, like at best, at best, like that's like really like no brightness, super low, slow settings and unplugged from the charger. Obviously it's battery power. So the MacBook Pro is a unique offering for somebody looking for on the go efficiency and great performance. Now, moving on the, down the line, let's take a look at the playback. Pretty solid playback. Zero drop frames for 6K B-RAW, which is a big win for myself. Now, if you're using red footage, 6K, 1,958 drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. If you're using red footage, I'm sure you have a budget for a bit more of a powerful version. You're probably looking at the M4 Max, maybe look at the 16 inch model. And so this might not be necessarily applicable to you because you think, well, I'll just upgrade the laptop and then playback will be totally smooth, which it would be. If you would get the M4 Max with say 64 gigs of RAM, you're gonna have zero drop frames for playback with red footage. It just won't even be an issue. All right, so I'm here at Apple's website and let's walk through that buyer's guide I was talking to you all about. Here is the entry level MacBook Pro 14 inch model. This is the M4, not the M4 Pro. So it's a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD storage. I do not think this is the right device to buy. Now it is $1599, so it's definitely the best price point However, I think if you're going to buy this device, you should be looking at the 14-inch MacBook Pro M4 Pro, 14-core CPU, 20-core GPU, 24 gigs of RAM, and a 1-terabyte SSD. Reason being, if you're somebody who's buying this model because you want to have great performance and on-the-go efficiency, you are not going to be able to have that 6K performance that you're looking for if you just get the base model. But you're also not going to get the benefits of more RAM. You're gonna be paying for two extra CPU cores from what I'm about to show you, but getting less RAM and less storage. So here would be my recommendation for somebody who doesn't need 6K video editing performance. Let's say you're a photo editor, you're a graphic designer, digital artist, and you do some video editing, maybe 1080p or 4K, you wouldn't need the larger new M4 Pro chip. So what I would recommend is the 15 inch MacBook Air M3. It has an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU, 24 gigs of unified memory and a one terabyte SSD. 
because you're not doing 6K footage, you don't need the extra CPU or GPU cores that come with the M4 Pro, but you get a larger screen than the entry-level MacBook Pro 14. You get more RAM and more storage, and for only a couple hundred dollars more. But this would save you $500 off of the M4 Pro, which you wouldn't need if you're not doing the 6K video editing or, you know, 8K or whatever it might be. Now you say, well, what if I want to get around the same price point as that entry level M4 14 inch? Well, then you could bump down to the 16 gig model of the 15 inch MacBook Air from 2023. You would have about $100 more instead of $200 more to get that one terabyte of storage. You'd have 16 gigs of RAM, eight core rather than 10, but honestly, that extra two cores is not gonna make as big of a difference as more RAM, like you can see here with this version. But for $100 more, you can get one terabyte of storage rather than $200 more for one terabyte of storage. So I'm saving you about $100 by choosing the M3. And trust me, you're not going to notice the difference in performance on the day to day. It's going to be the way to go. So that'd be my top buying recommendation. If you're somebody who's looking at the entry level MacBook Pro 14, I would steer you towards the 15 inch air. It's going to be thinner, bigger screen on the go friendly. Now you're not going to have the SD card reader. Keep that in mind. But then if you want to get the full performance and the full benefits out of the new M4 lineup, I would get the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro, 24 gigs of unified memory, and one terabyte of SSD. Now, throughout the buyer's guide, I've talked about the importance of having more RAM in your device. And the big reason for that is because the way that Apple configures the RAM and storage, if your device runs out of RAM space, let's say you're multitasking in Spotify, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Google Chrome, etc. And it maxes out your RAM. It's actually going to do something where it starts to utilize storage as temporary memory. And so what it'll do is it will wear down the amount of times the storage in your device can read and write and read and write and read and write. And so it wears out the longevity of the storage in your device. Let's say you have 512 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM. It starts to use your storage as temporary memory. So it wears out the storage. Lori from TechNotice has done a full video on this explaining how this works and why it happens. So definitely go check that out. I, if I can remember, I will link it up to this video so you can check out that video. But basically that is why I encourage people to get as much RAM as they can afford. My 15 inch MacBook Air, as I mentioned, is eight gigs of RAM. To me, this was a bit of a mistake because I've actually liked enjoying 6K footage on it, but 6K footage really pushes it hard in a RAM capacity. And so I know it's eating away at the lifespan of my storage in my device. So with that in mind, let's say you want to get more storage. You're like, okay, one terabyte is, is decent. That should give me enough to be able to keep some files on my device. But then I wanna add more, but it seems really expensive at $200 basically per terabyte to add storage. So that's why I recommend some Kingston drives. These are amazing. These are the XS1000 and XS2000s. They're not insanely expensive, but they are very fast and you can get them in two terabyte and I've even seen them in four terabyte versions. And I really like these. So I'll definitely link these up in the description below as a great alternative to adding storage to your device and uh, not adding more and more integrated storage, which costs more and more and more money. As mentioned in my intro, I would not buy the entry level MacBook Pro 14 inch, just straight M4. I think you'd be better off buying the M3 15 inch model upgraded to more RAM and more storage. It's going to have two less cores, but ultimately you're gonna get more performance out of having more RAM than you would having more cores in the long run. But if you're going for the MacBook Pro 14 inch model, I would go for the M4 Pro with 24 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. That will be a really solid device that makes sense to go for the latest M4. Otherwise, save some money, get M3, and have everything that you need. If you want more videos to help with your buying decision, click or tap the screen here. Otherwise, links are in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. I'm always grateful when you all use those links. I'll see you in the next video.